Question three. Are there different levels of mind? By this I mean the mind of, for example, elephants and dolphins in many ways seems superior to ours. Yet according to us humans, we see ourselves as superior. We are judging them against our experiences because we can't experience some of theirs. I hope that it's clear what this question is about. It's a matter of, are human minds the most superior of minds? Um, uh, in, surely, in some respects, other creatures uh, are superior to us. Um, we're just judging them by our standards. Um, surely, it's possible that other creatures have experiences which are unknowable to us. Um, and for that reason, uh, we, uh, we are not measuring them against us on uh, fair terms. Uh, we start with our own experiences, take them as the standard, and, and see uh, who else has what we have, and do they have as much. Uh, I think that this is a, a, a very a common uh, problem, and I think that it's very uh, widespread, the idea that humans are the best, that we have the most uh, impressive uh, mental faculties um, of all the animals. Now, it may surprise some of you to know that I don't altogether agree with this mental relativist attitude. I don't agree that all minds are equal. Um, and the basis for my saying that is that I draw a distinction between two aspects of what um, we're calling the mind. The one aspect is what are the core ingredients or the core properties that something has to possess in order for it to be described as mental. Uh, what, uh, what is absolutely necessary and sufficient for a mind to exist? As opposed to, uh, on the other hand, what um, instruments are available to that mind? What tools are available? What tricks um, uh, does it have at its disposal? Uh, as opposed to the, 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 the mind itself. So let me start with the first one, which is really what this course is about. This course is about trying to identify what those core features of a mind, what the absolutely necessary conditions uh, for, for the existence of a mind um, uh, to, to, to be. What are they? Um, I've said that, first of all, it's subjective. The mind is the thing of something. Secondly, it has to feel like something to be that thing. Um, in other words, it has to be capable of consciousness. Uh, thirdly, it has to have volition or intentionality. Um, and and I'll, I'll say a lot more about that in due course, but I, I can say now computers, uh, for example, have no intentionality. Uh, and then lastly, I speak of agency, which has to do with the degree of ownership of your own intentionality, the degree to which you are in charge um, of your own volition. Um, and all of this will become clearer in weeks to come. Now, especially that last uh, category, that last uh, component of what constitutes a mind, it admits of degrees. Uh, not all creatures are equally in command of their own volitions. And to the extent that your mind just acts through you, as opposed to your having possession of your faculties and you deciding what to do, um, which depends a lot in all uh, 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 in, in light of have from humans, and not only humans, that the, the extent to which you have a, a volitional control, to, to which you have free will, depends a very great deal on reflective ability, the ability to be aware of your own mental states and dispositions and so on. Now that last bit especially admits of degrees. Not all creatures have an equal amount of agency. And I think that agency is such a fundamental property of the mind that we have to admit uh, that we have to allow for a gradation. And if you think about it, the same applies to all uh, biological um, uh, entities. Things don't just suddenly appear in evolution, ready formed. Uh, there are intermediate forms. Uh, there are there are a, 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 a sort of stuttering gradations. Um, so we have to speak of a dawn uh, of the mind, of a coming into being of the mind, as minds would be something which perhaps we should call proto-minds, uh, something that you can see something of the beginnings of sentience, for example, uh, which means the being of this thing feels like something, uh, but very little actual volitional um, 
complete ownership of volitions. And so we go on uh, through the evolutionary series. I think that there is progress. I think that there is more of a mind um, as we, uh, if, if we look at it in those terms. Now, when it comes to the instruments of the mind, uh, the, if the mind is this sentient volitional agent, um, then it has at its disposable certain amounts of memories, uh, certain amounts of logic, uh, certain amounts of blah, blah. Uh, these things vary greatly from one species to another. And we must be careful not to assume either that the instruments that we use are the best and most important ones, or even to the extent that we share those instruments with other creatures, we mustn't assume that ours um, are, are, have, have maximal capacity. The questioner referred to elephants and to dolphins. Certainly, these creatures have enormous uh, uh, cortical expanse. They have fantastic memory capacities. And they and other creatures, capacities that we don't have, famously, um, one refers in this context to bats, you know, who have a whole sensory um, modality that we lack. So we can become a little uh, arrogant about our minds and think, think that our minds are the standard for everything. But I have to insist on this one point, which is that when it comes to agency, that is to say, when it comes to the degree of ownership of one's own mental states, which includes fundamentally one's awareness of the having of one's own mental states, in other words, reflection upon and ownership of um, knowing that it's me who's thinking this, um, the, the, the capacities that come with that, I think, are fairly fundamental to what a mind is. And I think that we're pretty good at that. And I'm not only saying that uh, out of bigotry. I'm saying it also in terms of the neuroscience, looking at the what parts of the brain perform these functions. And it turns out to be the prefrontal cortex. And our prefrontal cortex is uh, larger and especially in terms of connectivity it is more uh, sort of a superstructure better connected to all other structures in the brain than any other creature including our closest relative chimpanzees so um, I'm sorry if I sound like some sort of right-wing um, white South African that would be the worst horror that uh, you, you could bestow on me uh, so I, with all awareness of knowing that one wants to sound um, you know, politically correct. I'm afraid I do not believe that all minds are equal. I do believe that there's degrees to mindedness, and I think this applies especially to agency. That said, I also agree that there are ways in which we can be arrogant and think that our types of minds, and especially the instruments that we use, um, it, 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 the mental instruments that we have at our disposal, are the best ones. Why? Because, you know, compare other creatures with ours, and we have the most of our type. That, that is a silly way of thinking, I agree. Okay, long answer. <laughs>